Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm just gonna be testing out the Pentel Pocket Brush. This is a black one and I've not used these before. I got this bought as a gift at Christmas. So I figured I'd test this out on camera and maybe do a little bit of a mini review. So first thing to point out is that there is no ink in it yet. As you can tell, I was about to start drawing on camera. That would not have gone well. So they do come with it, they're just separate. Most brush pens I've bought actually already have the ink in it. I'm guessing this is just to stop it leaking, so I'll get these open. And it actually looks like it comes with comes with four ink cartridges. I think this pen was about £6.50, maybe £7 on Amazon. And considering it's got four refills, that seems pretty good to me. I don't really use brush pens, so I've never put an ink cartridge in, but it looks like it's pretty much like a standard ink cartridge, like on a fountain pen or something. So I'm going to push that in. I think I've pushed that in enough. I'm going to screw the barrel back on and let's see. I'm guessing it won't take long to actually start coming through. Just whilst that is still pushing through, I will say at the moment this brush nib is really quite hard. Um, I don't mind that because it probably means I can get a bit more detail, but I think it's actually just because it's new. So I think once I start writing with it and once it's got some of the ink in it, I think it will soften a bit. I've sped this up, but it seemed to take about a minute before the ink had pulled through. So once we've given the ink a couple of minutes to fill the brush, I've got some Bristol board here and I'm just going to draw some lines on it with the brush pen. And I'm doing this because I want to test to see if they are marker proof or waterproof or marker resistant, I should say, at all. Um, they probably won't be, but I want to test it in the video. So we fast forwarded 24 hours so I can put this bit of video in. We've got these two. I'm going to test, first of all, markers to see whether it is marker resistant at all. The answer there straight away is definitely no. I'm not even going to bother trying too much because I can already see it's bringing it, bringing it up and smudging it. That was an alcohol marker like Copix, Winter and Newton, that kind of thing. Now let's test it with water. Starting with just a little bit of water on my brush on this line. It's worth remembering again, this is Bristol board, so this is mainly intended for markers. It's not watercolour paper, so you might get slightly different results. And here I'm just putting down a heavier amount of water on the heavier lot of ink. So you can see the results there. Definitely not marker proof. Um, it's not that bad though. I did have to work it a bit. Waterproof, almost. I have gone quite heavy here. Maybe not waterproof, but quite water resistant. I would say you could still use it with your markers. You just have to be a little bit careful. Water, watercolours, I think you'd be absolutely fine with, to be honest. But that's just my opinion. You can see the results yourself. As mentioned, that was Bristol board. Now I've just got regular printer paper here. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting down some ink using different brush pens that I already own. Just because I want to see if there's any difference in the quality of the ink or maybe in the darkness of the ink, how black it is. I'm not sure how well this will show up on camera. If it doesn't show up well, or if there is at least a big enough difference worthwhile mentioning, uh, I will put a picture on the screen so it's a bit clearer. So I've put all these down. Um, a few things to quickly mention, these two are much harder brush pens, so these two here, and they are Tombow pens. I can't remember which is classed as which, but I'll put links in the description box uh, to all the pens that I use so that you can see them, because I might have got some of these names wrong. The Platinum 300 is one that I got on the Wish app, it's a really cheap one, but it has done really well in my other videos. You should definitely check them out when I compare inks and things. And this one is the Kurataki. Again, I'll put links in the description box because I can't remember exactly which one it is and I can't read the writing on it. I think it's a Sumi 8 or something. So the actual brush nibs are different on them. We'll take a look at that in a second, actually. But first of all, let me hold this up to the camera to see if there is a noticeable difference in ink colour. It seems pretty clear on camera. They are all very similar. The two Tombows do look a little bit lighter because of them being harder brush pens. I think I struggled to fill it in as much. So the Pentel definitely holds up pretty well. The Platinum CFW301 has a slightly blue tint, but it's almost not noticeable. And it might not show on camera. So that's only a really quick test of it anyway. I know it's not super detailed, but it just gives you a bit of an idea. I'm very zoomed in here, but I just wanted to show you each of these pens next to each other with the lids off. So we can at least see if there's any noticeable size difference between each brush. Just in case that is a factor for you when buying. It is very difficult to do this on camera because if I zoom in anymore, it will lose its focus and you won't be able to see it anyway. 
They're also quite difficult to see with the black pens having black brushes. Um, I would say the Platinum one is the biggest brush, but it also has a smaller end on the back for those that are interested, like a harder nib. I would say that the Pentel looks like it is slightly bigger than the Kurataki, or slightly thicker, if you put them together like that. And if I put all these side by side, you can see the size difference in the actual pens. Obviously this is the smallest one, the Pentel is a pocket brush. Assumably that's because you can fit it in your pocket, travel handy. And the reason I use this selection of brush pens is purely because it's just the random selection that I have. So the last few bits I'm going to look at, I'm going to see how quickly I can actually write with the pen or draw with it. Um, to see how much ink actually comes out with it. Obviously the slower you go, it is going to release more ink. I think that's going to be the same for all brush pens, but I don't have a lot of experience with them. I'd rather show it on camera just to be on the safe side. And let's take a look to see how detailed you can get, how thinner lines you can get with it. Because it is quite a soft brush pen this, so I think compared to like the hard tip Tombow pens, it's going to be quite difficult to do any detail work. For me personally anyway. So you can get thin lines, it is quite difficult unless maybe you are really good with a brush pen. Um, again, I think most brush pens are going to be the same in this case. And obviously due to the nature of the brush, you can get varying thicknesses. I'll tell you what, one other thing we'll quickly test. Let's see how bad the ink smudges. So if I just put one line down, straight away, no time to dry. Oh, it doesn't actually smudge at all. So that's pretty good. Let's try that one more time just to check that I haven't got lucky. Put a little bit more ink down. So I'm not smudging at all, which is really good. But again, remember this is regular print paper. It might set quicker on this than other types. I'm not sure. Finally, I'm just going to test these out by actually drawing something. As mentioned earlier, I don't generally use brush pens. I used them to make an Inktober video once. I'll put a link in the description box below the video in case anyone's interested in seeing that. You can actually see the signs from the October piece on the left hand side of the book where it's soaked through a little bit. But yeah, please don't judge me on this. This is not the way I normally draw. Personally, I usually spend quite a while just laying in pencil work and getting the structure right. Whereas with this brush pen, I tried to sort of just do it freehand, which is definitely not in my comfort zone. This actually started off surprisingly well for me. When I was drawing the head, I was thinking, okay, this is, yeah, this is not bad. Not my usual style, but it could definitely be worse. And then I moved on to the neck and it still seemed all right for me. Uh, but then once, once I moved on to the body and it's, I guess the equivalent of its bum muscles, its glutes, I messed it up. I drew the lines too wide. It wasn't very forgiving. So I ended up with a massively fat T-Rex pretty funny it's a shame because I feel like it would have been improved massively if I could have just moved the line up a little bit but I guess that's the whole idea behind this kind of drawing so you'll see the t-rex is pretty fat and he's got booty let's be honest overall I thought this pen was pretty cool especially if you do work with brush pens it's affordable it comes with four ink cartridges which means obviously it's refillable as well a lot of people don't like having to purchase the full pen again I think due to the environmental impact and things like that and with it being a pocket brush, it is obviously quite small, so it's quite good for traveling. Maybe if you have a little sketchbook that you carry around with you. It's pretty water resistant for those of you who use the brush pens with watercolors. The pen actually does come in other colors as well. I wouldn't mind trying some of those out. I've seen people do some pretty cool work using a mixture of the gray and the black. Because obviously it's going to be difficult to get anything sort of mid-tone and shaded, depending on your technique, if all you've got is a black. There's not too much more I can really say about it, but it is a nice pen to use and it's very affordable. If like me, you don't generally do these types of drawings without construction lines and things like that, it might be worthwhile getting one just to, you know, put you outside your comfort zone and try something new, which is always good. So that is the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe found it useful if you were looking at buying the Pentel Pocket Pen. As always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. Let me know what other videos you guys want to see. Thanks so much for watching, guys.